All right. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Blab with Bacon, and uh, I'm excited to have you guys here. Thanks for showing up, and I'm excited to talk to my guest, Brian R. King. Uh, what's the R stand for, Brian? It stands for Raymond, technically, was, but it also stands for resi it also stands for resilient. I like resilient. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's kind of what I was waiting for. I was waiting for that bonus plug. So um, why don't you tell oh, yeah. everybody who's here just a, a little bit about you and your story, because you've got a very interesting story. I mean... You've gone through a lot of stuff, and resilient is definitely a term I would use for you. Yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, I grew up with undiagnosed ADHD and dyslexia, which made school very nightmarish for most of the time. My graduation present from high school was testicular cancer, wow. and I spent the summer afterwards in chemotherapy and came away from that very angry, uh, very fearful. I spent a couple of years working with a social worker, and got so much from that relationship that I went into social work professionally, got my master's degree, began a family. I have three sons, all of whom have ADHD and are on various parts of the autism spectrum. Wow. So that turned me into an advocate for people with challenges, especially around ADHD and autism. About a year and a half ago, I was diagnosed with a degenerative condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which essentially means that the way my body produces my ligaments and tendons is faulty, so they are becoming increasingly weaker and slack, and my joints just like to dislocate randomly. Wow. So I'm either using a cane or a wheelchair to get around. But through all of that, the undercurrent of my entire life has been of resilience, meaning if something stands in my way, instead of sitting there and asking myself, well, which dreams do I have to let go of, you know, or what do I just need to resign myself to? To me, that's a whole load of BS. I don't even consider that. Instead, what I begin asking myself is what resources do I need in order to have the same results, you know, regardless of what life is thrown at me? Mm -hmm. So now what I do is I teach other people that skill set and that mindset how to be resilient so that nothing in life stops them. Awesome. So um, talk a little bit about your, um, what you're doing now. I mean, you, you say you teach people to do be more resilient. Why don't you give a little insight mm -hmm. as to, you know, what, where are you finding these people? What's their mindset and what are some of the outcomes that you're getting? Well, the best way to describe what I do is resilience coaching. And that tends to really, the people that have difficulty dealing with setbacks and stress, that have anxiety issues. Those are the ones that tend to find me. And they're in the entrepreneur community because there's so much on their shoulders from day to day, having to prioritize, having to delegate, having to let go of the reins a little bit instead of feeling like they have to own it all and be general manager of the universe. Mm -hmm. And they're on, they're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then there's the good old fashioned word of mouth. So give us some examples of, um, you know, some of the things that people are stressing about that you help them overcome. I mean, what are some of the, you know, like day-to-day -day things that people are, you know, really just finding themselves just, you know, they can't handle it. And where do you, where do you step in? What do you well, do? The day-to-day -day things are customers being angry, coworkers being angry, employees being angry, and thinking that that is somehow a reflection upon them personally. Mm -hmm. I screwed up, I did something wrong, instead of realizing that it is much more likely to be contextual and situation mm -hmm. and a shared experience. So what I do for them is change it from a me to a we. How did we create this moment of upset? How are we going to work in order to resolve it? Instead of it being my fault, I need to fix it so you like me again. Because mm -hmm. that's a very unhealthy dynamic that just leads to emotional roller coasters and exhaustion. Yeah, no question about it. And um, I mean, and it, it's really easy. I was talking with somebody about this. It's really easy just to blame yourself. I mean, it's really easy just to kind of take the world on your own shoulders. Um, you know, what kind of things, what kind of tools do you use to help people kind of get over that and really start to see the bigger picture? Well, the, the bigger picture is to realize that life as we know it is co-created. You know, everybody brings their expectations, their beliefs, their values to that moment. So if someone comes to you and is blaming you for everything, it can't possibly be all on right. you. Right. 
because this person wasn't just born yesterday. They come to this, this situation with all of their baggage. And if you realize that, hey, you've got some stuff going on here that's contributing to this, let me see if I can help you focus, okay? One of the, the million dollar questions to ask anybody is, what would you like to see happen here? Mm -hmm. what, would be, what would be a good solution for you? And I will do my best to get as close to that as possible. Gotcha. So by getting them focused, in many ways, they're actually identifying just what the problem is. Because in many cases, they show up with the, I'm angry and I want you to know that I'm angry. And it's about the emotion, not about the solution. So the moment you can ask them, what would you like to have happen here? It gets them out of their emotion, back into their head, so they can start thinking a little bit more rationally again. And that kind of helps make the shift happen. Awesome. Well, I just want to take a moment because I didn't do this at the beginning, but I normally do this. But the show has two sponsors. And the sponsors are, number one, the Bacon Podcast, which is one of my shows that I do interviews on internet marketing. The other thing's BaconCoach.com. So it's BaconPodcast.com and BaconCoach.com. I'd appreciate anybody watching this or the replay. Go check those out. And, um, and Brian, why don't you give yourself a, a little plug on what's your website so people see it at the beginning? My pleasure. It's pretty straightforward. It's BrianRaymondKing.com. And if you can't remember that, just look up Brian King at Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and you'll find you there. Awesome. So you give a lot of speeches. I mean, you go to uh, you. You just gave one this weekend, didn't you? I was the MC for a fundraiser. That was a first time for me, and that was really fun. Oh, that's cool. So, um, but you give a lot of presentations. What are your presentations generally on, and where are you speaking? Yeah, the presentations tend to center around that confident, unstoppable mindset. So what I really help people in the, the audience's address is what are their beliefs? We kind of lost you there for a second, Brian, at least on my end, it's locked. Um, I think we lost you, dude. And their values. Hopefully you can hear me, but it just, yep, lost your signal. Hey, if anybody wants to jump in, say hi, uh, got a question or something like that while we're trying to connect Brian back up, I mean, feel free to jump in. Uh, ask any questions. Uh, again, uh, this is, you know, about, there we go. Brian's popping back in here. Still, if you want to jump in, in the open seat, ask Brian a question, ask me a question, feel free to do so. Or you can put a question in the, uh, in the question window and the send a message. Make sure you tweet, tell a little bird, let people know that we're on. And uh, while we're waiting for Brian to reconnect, I'll, uh, I'll show you, uh, I've got a best-selling book called It's Not About You, It's About Bacon, Relationship Marketing in the Social Media World. That's where all the bacon stuff comes from. And then, of course, we have the Bacon Podcast. Uh, and you are watching Blab with Bacon. So that's all my bacon stuff I've got for you this morning. We're still waiting on trying to get Brian back in. This is, you know, this is Blab. Blab is a beta program, and sometimes, I mean, I have trouble occasionally getting in, and it's all based on the internet connection. So, um, you know, sometimes it just does what it does. So, um, any of you guys got any questions, want to jump in that open seat, feel free, and uh, we'll talk to you. Otherwise, uh, we're still waiting on Brian to reconnect. Sometimes this just happens. Um, but anyways, um, what I do is I help companies market themselves on the internet. I call myself a professional connector and I help people connect with their optimum perfect clients. And that's essentially what I do. And I do that through online marketing and that's what the bacon coach is about. And I'm actually working on another book called the bacon system. That'll be my fourth book. I've got three. I've got, it's not about you. It's about bacon. I've got bacon bits, which is 101 relationship marketing tips. And then I also have a workbook for it's not about you, it's about bacon. That's something that's used in colleges and in training to help people better understand how to promote their businesses online through relationship marketing. And that's really what the, the title of the book is. It's not about you, it's about bacon, relationship marketing in a social media world. And it's really about how to use relationships to find and work with your ideal clients. So we're still waiting on Brian. Hopefully we can get him back in. Uh, don't wanna cut this short. Oh, there he is. Let's see, let's try it again. Hopefully this time it works. 
And Brian, if you could hear me, sometimes just switching browsers helps. Um, I found that uh, occasionally Chrome doesn't always work, but I'm able to get in via Firefox. It's the only way I seem to be able to work Blabs. So there's, there's a tip for you guys. If you're going to Blabs and you're going to jump on hot seats, I mean, try a couple of different browsers because I found that Chrome uh, would not let me connect. I've tried Safari, wouldn't let me connect. And, and also Minicam, uh, which is what I use to do the lower thirds and the scrolling text and the things like that. It's called M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. Um, so I can do that to do all these neat little transitions in my scrolling text. And uh, it only works on Firefox. I could not get it to work on Chrome. I could not get it to work on Safari. So that's one of the things that I had to learn throughout the time. And then it gives you all these cool things. And uh, if anybody's having a birthday out there, I want to wish you a happy birthday from Bacon. Um, that's, uh, you know, so that's the cool thing about technology is you get to learn this stuff. You get to play with this stuff. And it took me a while to really get it down and, and understand how to use all these things, getting the right headset, getting the right, you know, internet connection. And it's, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, it, it can be a real challenge to try to get it all to work for you. But, you know, I, I first started blabbing way back in November and, you know, tried jumping on some other people's blabs. I, I really played around with it before I started my own show because I really wanted to get my arms around the technology. And it took me that long. It took me basically two months to kind of learn how to make this work and make it work a little bit more successfully. And sometimes, you know, it's restarting routers and computers and all of those kind of things. I mean, it just takes trial and error. So have you guys got any questions? Um, and, oh, so Brian tried switching browsers. He's still trying to get in. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get him in and finish up our conversation with him. In the meantime, if somebody wants to jump on, wants to talk about Blab, wants to talk about technology, wants to talk about, oh, let's see if we can get Brian. He's trying again now. We still want you to jump in if you have any questions. Um, so, uh, see if we get Brian in on this and, um, you know, like I say, it's always fun playing around with all the different tech and, uh, every single day. I mean, I've learned that through doing my podcasting, through video production, um, just so you guys know who are on and still listening. Uh, for years, I was an audio recording engineer. I owned my own recording studio. I was a video producer. I worked for AT&T. Uh, I've done so many different things in the online world. And I'm giving Brian some props just for trying to keep coming back on. Because <laughs> I know what it's like. I've been there, done that. Um, so I've got a, a huge background in all kinds of online marketing um, you know, technology. And so I love this stuff. I mean, I just think it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's a great way to communicate when it works. And Brian is trying again. Uh, that didn't seem to work. If you've got a third browser, Brian, try that. Um, you know, sometimes you just got to keep plugging away and make it work. But, um, you guys finding this interesting? I hope <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, Sir Bacon, uh, what do you drink? Uh, or what do you think is an effective way to market? Let me, let me put on my glasses so I can see that better. Um, okay, what do I think is, uh, Isaiah asks, what do I think is an effective way to market e-commerce? Well, the e-commerce world is a dog eat dog kind of thing. And you've got, I mean, the bottom line is you're on the internet marketing space and trying to get people to find you, trying to get traffic to an e-commerce site is generally hard without advertising. So what I think is the most effective thing, and I'm actually working with an e-commerce site that does CPAP supplies right now, is content marketing. And what we're doing with them is we're trying to get them to do more blogging and content development to lead people back to their sites. So doing education about what those products do. So um, Isaiah, without not knowing, what kind of products do you sell? Can you tell me? Because that would help um, to know specifically what channels, but that the the content marketing seems to be working for them because their traffic is definitely going up. Um, sales have not seen it yet, but it's been a short period of time. So that's one of the things that we're trying to draw more people into their particular uh, website. So Isaiah, what kind of um, what kind of stuff are you selling online? It'd be great to know that. That would help. And if you want to jump into the lock seat and talk through it, um, that would be fine. But, uh, you know, anything online, so, okay, small electronics, okay, so you're selling, like, uh, cameras and those kind of things. Um, well, that's, uh, you know, the, it's a tough space. It's a very tough space because let's, 
let's put it this way. Um, you know, your competition, probably the biggest competition you got out there is amazon.com and you've got places like B and H, um, depending on what kind of, uh, stuff you're selling. There's a lot of people in that space. And so the question becomes what makes you different than all the other people selling small electronics? Because frankly, people will buy primarily on three things. They'll buy on price. They'll buy on, okay, what else do I get with that? Do I get free shipping, no tax? And then also they'll buy on reputation. You know, is your reputation inc- impeccable that you deliver, you have great customer service? I mean, what are the things that make you different um, from someone in the other space that you're going head to head with, which is, you know, again, we're talking Amazon, you know, some big players in that market space. So you really got to kind of find a niche in that small electronic space and try to really communicate with those people. So that's, that's one of the biggest challenges about marketing small electronics um, is, is just the amount of competition that's out there. So hopefully that answered your question or did at least give you a little encouragement. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Well, if anybody else has a, you know, a a question or something that they want to talk about, um, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to jump onto the open seat while we wait for my guest, Brian R. King, to see if he can uh, reconnect and try it again. Um, You know, that's, uh, as I said earlier, it's one of the challenges with this, you know, new technology. If you notice that Blab says in the upper left-hand corner, it says Blab Beta which means this software is still in beta test. Well, it's been in beta test for, you know, six months and it's not a, you know, a perfect tool yet, but there's some other cool things, um, you know, that uh, they've just added. It shows uh, like a little map in the right hand side where you can kind of see where people are coming from. And um, you know, the question and answers has gotten a lot better. Um, So there's, you know, they're constantly making updates to it, but it is still a challenge because uh, it, it's a beta software. So Brian, hopefully you can um, try jumping back on one more time. Um, if not, then we'll maybe have to try to get you back on another time uh, when the internet connection is better. Um, you know what I'll do is let me see if I can just put a picture of him up there just so you guys can see it. No, it's not going to work for me. That's okay. Um, yeah, but Brian's a great guy. I've known him. The other thing too, if you know somebody who might be a really good fit for the show, because we tend to talk about internet marketing, online marketing, sales, uh, mindset, masterminds, coaching. I mean, anything that's around helping you and your business, let me know. And you can email me at bbasilico at me.com. And I don't have that anywhere, but just uh, I'll put it in the chat window so you can uh, actually send it to my assistant, K at b2b-im.com. I put it in the chat for you guys. That's uh, if you know somebody you think would be a good fit who has some expertise in this area that would want to, um, you know, jump on the show and be a guest. I would love to have them because uh, that's what this is all about. The show really is about you guys. I mean, trying to bring interesting guests so that you can learn some stuff and uh, and hopefully teach you some things that you didn't know. That's that's what I love to do. Is my background is uh, I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. So I try to help people learn things. And that's what I do in my business is I try to teach people different techniques in online marketing. And that's what baconcoach.com is. I'll go ahead and put that back up so you guys can see links to that. I uh, also have uh, baconpodcast.com, which is where I interview uh, some really incredible guests. As a matter of fact, today I'll be interviewing somebody named Mitch Axelrod, who is a master at selling. The guys help companies make billions and billions of dollars. So that's the Bacon Podcast, and that's available on iTunes. That's a place where you can hear interviews with a lot of people. They're short. They're about 10 minutes long. Some really great guests and some incredible information there. And then Bacon Coach is where I put together my my coaching program where I teach people um, 12-step program on internet marketing that helps them find their ideal clients. And then also um, they can, from that point, you know, really start to focus on having the right stuff. And Brian King says he does. He's so sorry he doesn't know what happened, um, but unfortunately he's trying to get back in. So we just uh, you know we'll kind of wait and see if he can do it again. Sometimes the internet just does what it does. Um, so that's that's kind of my story. I'll give it a little bit more and see if we can get him back. If not, we'll uh, maybe have to schedule him for another time. Anybody want to jump in to the open seat? Have any questions? Anything you want to discuss? I am here for you, uh, at least for a little while. 
And um, it's kind of hard to do a solo show with no guest, but that's the way it works sometimes. Um, so anybody have any questions, want to jump on, feel free. I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, questions, anything I can uh, help you with. That's what I'm here for. If not, I'll take a sip of water. So this show is at the same time every week. It's at 9 a.m. Central Time. And I do that because uh, I'm replacing a show that I did before. Um, I used to do an audio show on uh, Blog Talk Radio called Business Life Transitions, where we talked about um, business life and transitioning, you know, especially people in their 40s and 50s who are in this new economy. And unfortunately, uh, my co-host, Jan Marino, passed away at the uh, end of last year uh, from brain cancer. So I decided to switch up and do the blab uh, in her honor. You know, I wanted to keep the thing going and just uh, to honor her a little bit. And, and, you know, but unfortunately, she was the expert in transitions. Even though I've gone through a lot of transitions, I've done that before. That was her, her specialty. So I was kind of like the, I was her sidekick and she was the uh, person that really drove that show. So it was kind of hard for me to continue since my area is online marketing and technology and things like that. So um, I brought the, you know, the social media aspect to, to the show where she brought more of the, the hardcore understanding what's happening in the world as far as transitioning from what used to be the, you know, the economy where people would have jobs for 40 years to the average length of a job now that people get is like five years, three years. I mean, it varies depending, but they're not staying at jobs longer. And that's why I love what I do because I'm a serial entrepreneur and I, I help other people who are getting into the entrepreneurial space understand the online marketing side of things because I've been in marketing for 35 years, having run recording studios and like I said, doing video, working for ad agencies and production companies and doing everything from CD-ROM development, web development, programming, Google, all those kind of things. And so that's where my, my background is, is really in the whole online marketing space. So we're going to wait a little more and see if we can get Brian back on. If not, then uh, we're, you know, again, I'll ask you guys, if you have any questions, I would love to hear what it is that you would like to uh, have answered. You can jump in the hot seat. Um, you got a question, go ahead and ask it. If you want to discuss anything, uh, I'm more than willing to do that. I'll stick around till 930. And uh, if we can't get Brian back on, so which is about uh, 10 more minutes and try to keep you entertained for that time because it's, uh, you know, we don't have any specific topics um, or questions coming in. So just kind of tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing. Um, you know, the, the world of Internet marketing is changing incredibly fast. And uh, one of the questions I get asked a lot is uh, in the Google space is Google Plus dead. And the answer to that is no, it is very alive and kicking. It's just kind of gotten a facelift. And originally Google Plus was supposed to be the Facebook killer. It was going to be the thing where everybody was going to jump on and do all their communications and, and have their fun stuff happening there. Um, but it never really took hold that way. But the one place where Google Plus is still the mainstay is in what's known as business.google.com or Google Business. That's where your business is found on the map. Whether you're a, a national business or a small local business, it's still important to claim all your Google properties. And the thing about Google Plus is you still, it's very much like Facebook in the fact that you have to be an individual first, and then you can claim as many business pages as you want. You can only have one physical location. So that means that you know, I B2B interactive marketing. That is my one company that has an address. If you're a local business working out of the home, you don't have to show that address. You can say, I serve people within a radius. From there, you can add as many brand pages as you want. So I've got one for Brian Basilico, author, speaker, coach, and that's brianbasilico.com. That's that. Uh, I have, uh, it's not about you. It's about bacon, which is about my book. I have B2B interactive marketing. I have social network consulting, which is a whole nother thing where I have classes and things of that nature. So you can have as many of those as you want inside of Google. And then back to Isaiah's questions, I mean, one of the things that we try to do is we try to um, get people to find that information by posting content marketing information. 
So an, an example of that is my blog is some content. I do a podcast uh, that twice a week, that's some content. So I make sure that content is posted into Google Plus, Google indexes it, and then also drives traffic back to my website. So that's why content marketing is so incredibly important because it first and foremost gets your website found. And then secondly, it also helps you drive traffic back to your website. So that's one of the philosophies I work on. And the key thing is I do it myself first. I mean, I actually do all of this stuff for myself before I teach it to other people. So I'm not just teaching people vaporware. It's something that I do for myself, for my customers, and I know it works. And I watch how it changes. I look at all the trends. So Google is Google Plus is still very much alive. Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are the three most important. But uh, you know, I was with a bunch of kids, and they spend most of their time on Twitter. That's where they're at. Um, this weekend, I was uh, volunteering at an event, and high school kids were there. And I asked them, I said, where are you guys spending your time? They all said Twitter. Now, I thought it was Instagram and Snapchat, but no, they're, that's at least what this small subset of people said it was. So, you know, it's, it's really... The, I think the most important thing about online advertising or any kind of advertising or sales and marketing is first understanding who your avatar is. Who is your perfect client? Then the second thing becomes, where are they hanging out? I mean, where are the places that they're spending their time? Is it Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on and so forth? Next question you got to ask yourself is, what are they consuming? Are they consuming videos? Are they consuming podcasts? Are they consuming um, articles? Are they consuming just their friend stuff or memes or, or pictures or whatever it is? And then you've got to figure out, okay, how can I jump on that bandwagon and be one of the people that is feeding the things that they're consuming in the place where they're at so that it draws them back ultimately to you, your business, your website, the properties that you talk to them at. So that's, that's one of the key principles of online marketing is understanding it all starts with having the perfect avatar and then kind of drawing it back into, you know, your space. And that kind of, uh, again, goes to what Isaiah was asking before, which is, you know, what's the most effective way to market e-commerce? Well, that is, you know, you got to find out where the people who are buying that small electronic stuff are, and then how can you communicate back with them and get them to your website? Because that's ultimately the goal. You can obviously try to pay for traffic, but there's a lot of people which much, much deeper pockets that are out there can spend more money than you can. And that, that becomes a kind of a losing proposition, especially if you're spending money in advertising and it's not bringing you more money in than you're spending, um, that could bankrupt a business faster than anything. So it's really understanding your financials, understanding, you know, where people are and then trying to find ways that are not going to break the bank to get them back to your property. So, I see Brian's probably given up. Uh, I'm going to give it one more shot here. Uh, you guys got any questions? You want to jump on the hot seat? I'll stick with you for a little bit. If not, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Check back next week. I will have another guest. And I do this every Monday morning, 9 a.m. Central Time, Blab with Bacon. There's a website. Go to blabwithbacon.com. You can listen to the past shows. I archive all these. I also will announce who the next guests are if you know any guests. Uh, check the window and uh, let K and B2B-IM.com know. Um, again, we focus on internet marketing, online marketing, you know, specifically the small businesses is really uh, kind of the niche we're working. So if nobody else has anything else, I'm going to uh, bid you guys adieu. Thank you for showing up. I'm sorry about the technology with our guest. I was looking forward to asking him a lot more because he's got a lot of knowledge. Uh, great guy. So uh, we will hopefully see you next week on Blab with Bacon. Thanks for coming, guys.